Today, I'm going to give you guys seven tips on how to become a better Gambit player, and we're going to start right now. What's up guys, Reckless here and welcome to Guardian Watcher. So today, I wanted to give you guys several tips on how to become a better Gambit player. Seven tips to be exact. Yes, seven. But before we get into the video, if you haven't already entered the Destiny 2 Forsaken Annual Pass giveaway for October, then click on the link in the description box below for your chance to win. So, Gambit is one of the newest game modes with the release of Forsaken. I will say that I definitely have a lot of fun playing it, but on the other hand, it could be very frustrating at times. Like, have you ever had that one guy in Gambit that doesn't do anything or is constantly AFK? Or how about that guy who invades constantly and never gets a kill? Oh, wait, 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 my favorite. Or what about that guy who steals all of the moats and gets killed by ads or the invader? Yeah. Like I said, it can be frustrating, but that is why I have seven tips on how to become a better Gambit player. Now, these are pretty much common sense to a lot of people, but common sense isn't so common these days. So let's get started with tip number one, your loadout. Your loadout is a difficult decision to make when playing Gambit. You need the right balance of weapons for PvE as well as PvP. What you need to do is have weapons that'll help with either occasion. Personally, when playing Gambit, I like to use an SMG as my kinetic, and my SMG is the Pillager with a 37 round mag, an RPM of 900, and it has Outlaw and Rampage with a masterwork of handling. It is a beast and it is amazing. I love it. My energy weapon is the Badlander, which is a rapid fire frame shotgun. It's not the best shotgun in case of perks, but I do like it because it does have field choke and slide shot. And depending on what my team is running will depend on what my power weapon that I use. Usually it's either the sleeper simulant, the, the sleepless, and my sleepless has kill clip with cluster bombs and I love it, tractor cannon, or whisper of the worm. Since I'm in a hunter now, I will use the stompies as an arc strider and a gunslinger or night stalker using the middle tree. Now, given that my stompies have traction on them, it will make it easier for me to turn corners fast. And I will be using the stompies until I get that new exotic for the gunslinger and that thing is amazing. The gunslinger itself, that new sub -tree, uh, subclass tree, wave of a thousand cuts, wow. Blade barrage is wow. <laughs> However, if I am playing more of a support role, then I will switch to my Orpheus rig, and yes, they are still good after the nerf in Gambit at least, and pretty much go on the top tree when I'm on my Night Stalker subclass. Now, when it comes to your loadout, definitely make sure you use whatever you feel comfortable with, but can actually get kills with. Mind you, PvE and PvP need to be taken under consideration for this because invaders do come at you and they do come at you pretty fast and most of the time you do not know where they're coming from. Tip number two is team. You need to have a full team going into Gambit and not just a full team but everyone in the party needs to be in a party chat as well. Communication is huge in Gambit. Gambit's not just kill things, grabbing moats, depositing moats, kill primeval, repeat. If your team doesn't have any communication, then you will definitely lose to a full fire team with communication. Now, I understand that not a lot of people have friends or they have a lot of time constraints, but Destiny as a franchise has a huge community and I have made many friends over the years. You can make friends too, but not just the team itself, strategies within the team are also a huge thing. You don't want everyone running after moats because eventually the other team will summon an invader and kill everyone before you can even deposit your moats. You need at least one person hanging back as support with a ranged weapon helping to kill adds that way other people can grab the moats. That is if you aren't going for a specific triumphs. Tip number three is movement. Now you want to have gear that makes you move fast like the stompies, transverse steps or the lion rampart. And I really wish that the Twilight Garrison exotic chest piece for the Titan does come back in Destiny 2. Bungie, go ahead and make that happen. That thing was amazing for Titans. And if you don't know about it, then definitely go ahead and look up the Twilight Garrison on YouTube somewhere. Mobility will help you get kills and modes faster, as well as help get you out of tight situations with adds or an invader. 
Not just individual movement though. You should always move as a team from location to location in order to get team shooting going as well as chaining supers to make orbs to get your supers back. Also, definitely utilize the portals on each map. They can get you from one side of the map to the other pretty fast. Tip number four is blockers. Now, do not, I repeat, do not send blockers over to the other side by yourself. The object is to overwhelm the other team with blockers. Now, I see it time and time again, when players send blockers over to the other team, they only send small blockers. Don't do that. Use the rule of five when it comes to sending blockers. Five for small blockers, 10 for medium blockers, and 15 for large. Do not waste depositing moats early on in the game with a small blocker. It's way too easy for one person just to take down a small blocker, so instead, mix and match medium and large blockers. When you have moved within two locations, your team could have two medium and one large blocker. So, send them all at once and add a small blocker after. The reason being is because small blockers are taking phalanxes, which, with their shields, pushes the other team away, and it'll make it harder for them to get closer to the medium and large blockers if they're not using ranged weapons. And when you do it like this, sending two mediums, a large blocker, and then small blockers after that, those small blockers will be annoying AF when the other team is trying to get rid of the medium and large blockers. Especially when they have a shotgun that they're trying to take down the blockers with. Primarily, I would probably say send two medium blockers, one to two large blockers, and then the rest small blockers. It'll make it very difficult for the other team. On top of that, when the opposing team is focused on the blockers, then you can go ahead and invade them and take out everyone on their team, due to them being so overwhelmed. Which brings us to tip number five, invading. If you are not a PvP player, please do not jump into the portal to invade. I understand that getting a kill on the other team is fun, but if you cannot get at least three to four guardians down on the other side, or you automatically die while jumping through the portal, then you are wasting time that can be utilized grabbing and depositing moats. Also, when your team's primeval is up and the other team has a long way to go, do not go and invade. Use this time to DPS the primeval as fast as possible. Which brings me to number six, the damage phase. Let's say your team has a primeval and the other team still has a long way to go before getting theirs. The very first thing you want to do is to kill the wizards adjacent to the primeval. Once you kill both of the wizards, your team will get a huge buff in damage against the primeval. Once you get that buff, focus all DPS on headshots on the primeval. It is very crucial that you guys get those crit shots. And it's also easier if your whole team is together in a single area, that way the primeval only faces one direction. So be close to the primeval, but don't be too close because you don't want an invader picking your team off easily. Ranged weapons like a sniper or everyone's favorite power weapon, the sleeper simulant, are perfect for DPS. The only time that you need to invade during the primeval phase is to catch up on DPS or slow the other team down because they're taking down their primeval too fast. Other useful weapons are the ones I mentioned earlier in the video, but remember that some abilities do not stack. For example, you will not do extra damage if somebody bops the primeval with tractor cannon or uses melting point and then one of your teammates or yourself try to tether the primeval. So it's best if someone is using the tractor cannon or sunbreaker titan, then you do not use tether. As for tip number seven, if you have tips one through six down with a good team that has great communication with each other, then the seventh tip is just to have fun. Gambit is an amazing game mode and when you have all the things in place, all that's left to do is have fun and win. I promise you that if you do these seven tips, then you and your team will get better and better when playing Gambit versus other teams that have solo queue players or teams that don't have great communication. And if you guys have any other strategies that you use while playing Gambit, then please share them with everybody in the comment section below. And I definitely would love to read what you guys are doing in Gambit, besides trying to get them out facing this quest to drop.
And that, my friends, brings us to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to watch these videos as well. You never know, you just might like them. And if you do, leave a like, share them, and come back for more, because you know you want to. Thank you guys for watching, and remember, less guns doesn't mean less crime. And I will see you guys next time.